Hi everyone, welcome. So today I gotta go through the deep dive of the source code, particularly for the object detection. As you've seen from our video, we've been working on this behind the scene. And today I gotta show you the, the source code that Adrian developed and also the Kaggle code that I developed. So those two will give you some really good hands-on material to try out at home or even learn more about AI for your future. Let me share you the screen and I'm gonna explain how things works here and how you can actually use it. What happened now on your screen, you can see this is the notebook. So the notebook is uh, one of the very simple way for you to learn how our source code works uh, because it's written in Python and it's very easy to understand and read. And we also provide you all the documentation you need. So to read through it, um, the object detection we're doing today, we're gonna use the SSD light from MobileNet 3.2. And if you don't know about this, no worry. You click on this link, it will bring you to the description, the paper. More importantly, you can see how the input and output to the model works and some of the basics behind, let's say, what data set is being used. So again, I'll leave that as a homework, but let me show you how this will come together. Once you're in this environment, the OpenFail notebooks, you can just run and run all cells. So this will start executing every single code in the notebooks. So first thing you see, we import the OpenPhino library along with some of the GUI and other math libraries like OpenCV as well. Then step one is downloading the model. So in OpenPhino, we provide a repository called OpenModelSue. It has, we've been, we've been hosting a lot of these models and it has a lot of them that you can try in this case, we're downloading the one called SSD Lite. You can see with this command line. And once this gets executed, we go through the conversion. This is where the magic happens, where you get the performance gained and even the reduce in the model size because we'll be converting this from 32 to 16. FP32 to FP16 means the floating point. Now, after that, you start loading the model. So the code is pretty much standard. Uh, you will learn that along the way, if you keep coding in OpenPhino, we will basically load the, mo load the model and then we define where you want to put it. In this case, I put it on the CPU. So you can run on CPU, the GPU, or other hardware devices that Intel supported. Now, I think the important part is what can this do? So in this object detection, it can recognize, I believe it's 90 category of objects. So you can look at here, we have birds, we have cats, we have horses, sheep, cows. So that's actually how you actually get the cow detection work. So to no further ado, let's take a look at the results because I think for all of you, you want to see how this worked. So here you can see this is actually running the object detection on the webcam in real time. I'm running recording and all that right now. So it looks a little bit slower, but you can easily get much better performance on your own laptop. And beyond on the webcam, it also runs on a video. So imagine you have some use cases, you can run it on, let's say offline video like surveillance camera or some sort of projects that you wanna, let's say track the health of cows. So now, so you see, as you can see, it works. Um, let's talk about the actual code itself inside. So to run this object detection, um, we are pulling basically two things. One is we're using OpenCV to capture the webcam video, as you can see here. And once we have the video loop, so this is one thing that you do a lot, put a while loop, you extract each of the frame. And then from the frame, you resize it and then put it through the network. So this resizing is quite important because we want to match the size of this toward the, the network itself. And you can find the information right in this description. So for our input in this case, it will be 300 times 300 and three channels. And that's the format that we're taking in. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're trying to resize it so that it fit to the network so we can fit it into it. This is the exact part you do the processing, right? So you can see we process this to get the results. So this is basically pushing the input image into the model and you then you get the results back. Then to process the results, you go to the above. You can see we actually basically get the output. It says it basically is a set of bounding boxes. So from there, we then draw the boxes. But 
you will notice one thing. If you don't do something called the non-maximum suppressions, you get a lot of boxes everywhere. Because our algorithm works like, okay, there's like a potential, there's a frame here, that's part of the region, it's a dog. But if you move a little bit, it could be still a dog. So then from there, you want to find out, okay, out from this whole region of overlap of boxes, which one is the most prominent one? And this is the method called non-maximum suppression. Again, we put our source code here and you can see some of the links. After that, I think what's important to you is now you have the structure behind it. You can rewrite this any way you like for different models. For example, you can use YOLO and others. The structure will be very similar. Of course, you have to figure out the detail, like does it have the same model size? The output may be different, but at least you have the structure to get you into the right place. This is beautiful because to me as a developer, you want the work to be portable. To demonstrate that, indeed, I took this to Kaggle platform, the, the competition platform, where you can run it on the notebooks there. So what you're seeing now is the example of the same work, almost I would say, but I rewrite it to make it work on the Kaggle. So as you can see, very similar. The only thing I did, I think slightly differently is I do a bit of pre-installation for you on the server. So you can see I already did the installation here one time and the rest will be very, very similar to what I just showed you. You have the import library, the runtime library, the models, conversion. And as you can see the conversion detail here, I think the cool part is out from all this result, I rewrite the wrapper a little bit. So at the bottom, now you can put in your own image, not a video, but your own image from any data set. So in here, I put a cats and dot data set from, uh, from one of them. So you can just like say add data uh, and you just find the one you like. I remember I was looking for the cat and dogs or something. Then you just import it and add it right to it. Once you add that data set to on the right side, you can see this like all this data set. What you do is you, let's say you want to try them. You just go here, copy the file path and put it there. Right. So by replacing this line, whoops, that's a cat. <laughs> this one, let's say, this is the cat. Now you rerun this. Now you detect a cat again. So now you can have many different of different example you can try by simply replacing one line of code as a sample. Here, now we run again, different cat. Oh, it says a dog, hmm, even more interesting. So that looks like a dog, that's ambiguous. So that's an example of the new network may have a data set that may not fit exactly. So let's try this one again and it's not detected. So that's exactly why I put it on the Kaggle platform. This is where you can experiment this data set, see if it's actually providing the right solution for you. And none of the neural networks should be perfect, right? Like perfect means 100% accuracy. So this is where you can start using Kaggle as a way to validate your work and making sure that your model is doing what you need. And seeing the failure is actually what makes you stronger as a data scientist because you're trying to figure out where the failure cases and you learn from those. And that's perfect for me because now I know it can detect cats and dogs in a mixed way. And lastly, I think for the fund, um, what you can do is you can do your own way and trying to grab your own image, detecting cows, detecting different things. And those are the important and fun things you can try tonight by just copy and paste this chunk of code and replace the input. So that's it for the tutorial so far. Hopefully you learned something from me today. Um, so if you have any further questions, I think the best way is to try the source code and leave a comments there. Thank you everyone.